Man, this is gonna be very interesting to report on. First of all, if you hear me like huffing and puffing, I literally got the Woj bomb on my watch as I was on the treadmill. So I'm still waiting for my heart rate to rest a little bit. So if I sound a little weird or if I sound like I'm about to die behind the microphone, that's why. But we got a crazy bit of news. The best free agent in this year's free agency class, Gordon Hayward, officially made his decision. And man, I must admit, it was not the decision that what I was expecting. Now, before we get to the content, we're gonna start doing career simulations on Flight Mike TV. A link to my gaming channel is in the description down below. But on top of that, if you wanna go the extra mile and support your boy during this time, this is our fourth video in the last 24 hours. Well, we just dropped channel memberships. You can become a Mike Mafia soldier, underboss, or Don to further support the channel. And we also dropped football content on a separate channel, bro, called Microphone. Now that we've got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mic check, one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Guys, the Charlotte Hornets have had probably one of the better off seasons that they've had in quite some time. And I don't think it's because they did something brilliant. I don't think Mitch Kupchak is out here making moves that's really making us think, oh my God, the Hornets are a true contender in the East. Rather, I think it's more because they were in the perfect situation to do these moves. For example, drafting LaMelo Ball at the number three overall pick, kind of a no-brainer. Doesn't really take a genius to do that. But their latest move today might be the most puzzling yet most interesting move that they've made all season. And honestly, I'm not gonna gas this up at all because we've literally seen the Charlotte Hornets make the exact same move about four years ago. So for those of you guys that didn't hear, after days and days of anticipating Gordon Hayward leaving the Boston Celtics to join possibly the Indiana Pacers or even return to Boston, that didn't end up happening. There was this report that came out yesterday about Danny Ainge trying to get Miles Turner for Gordon Hayward, which the Pacers were apparently okay with. But the problem was, Danny Ainge wanted TJ Warren to be included in a package with Miles Turner for Gordon Hayward, or he just wanted Victor Oladipo in return for Gordon Hayward. So I'm sorry, Boston Celtic fans, and I don't want you to look at me like I'm some sort of biased Laker fan because I praised the Celtics at nauseum for how well they manage their assets and how brilliant that Kevin Garnett, Jason Terry, Paul Pierce trade was for those three first round picks from Brooklyn that pretty much allowed them to rebuild while still contending at the same time. But they massively fumbled this situation and it's really a shame to see now i'm not saying that their team is in such a horrible situation that you can't come back from it but if you got back miles turner or victor oladipo or hell even tj warren by himself i would say this is okay this is not the biggest deal on earth but what are you going to get back for gordon hayward from charlotte now you know, in a sign and trade deal, not anything nearly as good. And this is Danny Ainge selling, in my opinion. I'm sorry if that bothers you because Gordon Hayward officially announced that he is signing a four year, $120 million deal with the Charlotte Hornets. Now, the reason why I'm saying we've seen this before is four years ago, the Charlotte Hornets decided to overpay another guard who was about 27 years old, who didn't live up to expectations, who was averaging very similar numbers to Gordon Hayward. No, it's like absolutely scary. If you go back to the 2015 to 2016 season, Nicholas Batum averaged 15 points per game off of 43% shooting, attempting 5.7 threes per game and converting on 35% of them. Well, guess what guys? Gordon Hayward, very similar statistics. Last year averaged 17.5 points per game off of way better field goal percentage, by the way, 50% from the field, shooting 4.3 three-pointers per game and converting on 38% of them. 
Gordon Hayward's player efficiency rating this past year was an 18, whereas Nicholas Batum's during his final year of his previous contract before he got overpaid by the Charlotte Hornets was 15.6. So if you're asking me, this isn't nearly as bad, but I can't help but feel like it's eerily reminiscent of the Nicholas Batum signing, which by the way, Batum is expendable and his contract is expiring. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Charlotte trade him this off season or during this year. Now I know what you guys might be thinking, Mike, why on earth would Gordon Hayward do this? Well, first let's take this from the angle of Boston Celtic fans. If you're a Celtic fan, I'm really sorry because the Celtics have lost two max contract players in the past to free agency in the past two years, last year being Kyrie Irving, this year being Gordon Hayward. And you wouldn't think Gordon Hayward would leave because, dude, his college head coach that he's buddies with, Brad Stevens, is in Boston. Why would he leave the Boston Celtics, who, by the way, were going to pay him $34 million this year? to sign with the lowly Charlotte Hornets. The Boston Celtics are definitely better suited for competition in the East than the Charlotte Hornets, so why would he leave? Well, the issue isn't so much contending, it's more the issue of the fact that if Gordon Hayward was to opt in for this season and hit free agency next season, well, dude, next year's free agency class is freaking crazy. Next year, you have Giannis and Atacumpo, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Rudy Gobert, Victor Oladipo, Drew Holiday, if he decides to opt out, Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, and Chris Paul. Don't forget if Chris Paul decides to opt out, Blake Griffin, if he decides to opt out, Mike Conley, Andre Drummond, and Steven Adams. All of those players, this is going to tell you how bad this year's free agency class is. All of those players would easily be the top free agent in this year's free agency class. So if Rudy Gobert was to opt in for his final season with the Boston Celtics, think of it in terms of next year. A team that strikes out on Paul George and Kawhi Leonard and once all those needs are filled, the teams that have big money to sign a player like Gordon Hayward are simply just not going to be there. So this is a play for long-term stability for Gordon Hayward. He doesn't want to compete. He didn't look at the Charlotte Hornets and say, hey, I really want to run with LaMelo Ball. Hey, I would really love to reunite with Terry Rozier. It has nothing to do with that. This 100% has to do with the fact that he just wants to secure a bag to make sure that he's getting paid until the end of his career. So now that all this is happening, the Hornets cap situation looks absolutely horrendous. But if you ask me, if they want to really come up with a sexy move to really greatly improve their roster despite just having drafted LaMelo Ball. They are losing Bismack Biombo to free agency this season, which thank God that guy got paid way too much money for doing way too little. Shout outs to Bismack Biombo's agent because he's crushing it. But if I was them, I would package Nicholas Batum and Terry Rozier together and trade them to the Houston Rockets to bring along Russell Westbrook. At this point, I can imagine that the Rockets are all on team just get us out of Russell Westbrook's contract. Russell Westbrook would have a remarkable team around him because Gordon Hayward doesn't really need to dominate the ball in order to be successful. I'd like to imagine that LaMelo Ball would be successful as an off-ball guard, but I don't think that ne that would necessarily be really good for his development. I'm just speaking in hypotheticals here because I see a trade that could potentially work for both sides, especially if the Houston Rockets would give up picks to the Charlotte Hornets in order to take on the horrible contract of Russell Westbrook. The only reason why I don't see this happening is because this is not necessarily Mitch Kupchak's style. He's never been the type of player that would overpay a player for absolutely no reason. Okay, maybe he's done that a couple of times, but he's never been the type of player that would take on a bloated contract in return for assets or draft picks. And I'd hope, at least in this situation, as the Charlotte Hornets are trying to claw themselves out of what seems to be a perpetual rebuild that he will look at this opportunity to bring along Russell Westbrook to complement Gordon Hayward, LaMelo Ball, Miles Bridges, and Devontae Graham. But that's another issue. The Hornets have Devontae Graham. Do you really want to mess with a young up-and-coming backcourt like that? So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this move. What do you grade the move for the Charlotte Hornets? What do you grade the move for Gordon Hayward? I would grade this move an A for Gordon Hayward and a C minus for the Charlotte Hornets. You don't make this type of move unless if you're close to contending. And this is just throwing money at a player just to throw money at a player. 
There's no real logic or rationale behind it at all whatsoever. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Aside from that, I'm your boy The Flight Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.